So I've been thinking about our sketchbook series and I'm so excited of all the things that are happening. It's been really fun. And um, today, um, I, well, it wasn't today. It was earlier this week when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for today and looking at my list of ideas that I made earlier in the summer. Um, I wanted to do something that was, we were studying the masters. And I think it's really important as artists that we go back through history and look at the masters and even contemporary masters. Like, you know, depending on the style you're interested in and what you're doing, you can gain so much knowledge and information by looking to the past in addition to looking to our peers, um, you know, taking classes from people who are, um, you know, your peers, your teachers, whomever, and learning and then kind of, you know, blending it all together to, um, to create, to, in order to practice and to create. So the sketchbook as what I want from my sketchbook is to pour out my ideas. I am not interested at this point, it doesn't mean that I won't change. I'm not interested in making it a work of art. I want it to be a place that can hold all the ideas, the exercises that I give myself, the studies, and sometimes they come out really beautiful and other times it's just a big mishmash. But what I find is important, it's like this improvisation, if you will. If I relate it to dance, which I always relate my art to my dance, there are these times where you just are open to inspiration and allowing it to flow through you without having to be, you know, rigid about it. So when I'm choreographing a dance, there is this time where I'm in the studio, it's just me and the studio and I'm moving and I have ideas in my head. I'm writing things down. I'm listening to music. It's just this whole process. So I like to look at my sketchbook as this place that's a process, it's part of my creative process. And you as artists will develop your process and have things that are of interest to you that you put into your sketchbook. But I think the sketchbook is a really integral part of us creating and getting those ideas down, practicing creating exercises and any type of sketchbook that you have. So um, I was thinking about the masters and we often, you know, we go to the museums or we have their beautiful books uh, and looking at the finished paintings. And sometimes there are their, their first sketches, the first idea. And I find that really interesting to look at, you know, here's a Degas painting of the ballerina and then here is his first sketch. And what I like is the sketch over other sketches and um, thinking back, like they couldn't just run to Michaels and get a new sketch pad. <laughs> you know, paper was like harder to come by, especially back, like even if we go further back to the Renaissance, it was hard to find that they had parchment. And so they didn't get to run and buy a cool sketchbook from Amazon. <laughs> so I, I love looking at how they used a piece of paper and to try and work through the ideas. So I, I discovered this little book there. Um, there was, sadly, there was a really beautiful used bookstore in a neighboring town, a small town called Dexter, about 20 minutes from our house. And we would go to downtown Dexter and we'd get something to eat. We'd always go into this bookstore and it was called Serendipity. And they had a huge collection of art books. I would just like get stacks of books from them. And they were like, you know, three, four, or five dollars. So I found this one, which I'll show you. Um, it's really beautiful, but it's falling apart. It's the drawings of Raphael. And it's falling apart, as you can see. But it's all his drawings, and it's also, um, there's some pages missing, but I was able to um, do a little research and read a little bit about him, and um, I think, let's see, I think I wrote it down, but I didn't. Um, I think he was, it was in the 16th century, and he lived in a small town, and his father was a painter, and he wasn't, you know, a master or anything, and he would help his father. And then he started studying with another man, and I can't remember his name, what was his name, I will tell you, hold on. I've got it in my book right here. 
Let's see. Um, his father's name was Giovanna, Giovanni Santo. And he studied with a man named Perugino. And what I got from the um, information, the, the story in the book, is that his, in the beginning, his drawings were more um, stiff and wood like, very um, clumsy. And he was studying with this man. Like they didn't, they had to study, you know, the drawings of another person because they didn't have Pinterest, <laughs> they didn't have online art classes. So they would study the drawings of another person. They would try to study from life. Um, so he worked with this man for years and had a lot of commissions. And then he went to Florence during the high Renaissance and it changed his life and how he saw art. And he became completely consumed with the art of many masters, but mainly Michelangelo and Da Vinci. And so in this book, it has all these plates, these drawings, his drawings, and you it, you can see his earlier drawings, then you can see the influences of what he took when he studied. So what I understand from reading this book, even though there are pages missing, he didn't, I did not get, I could be wrong, so don't quote me, that he didn't go to Da Vinci's studio and the great master said, okay, this is how I'm drawing a horse. He would go and study their paintings, their drawings. Somehow he was able to look at the drawings and that's what he studied from and um, learned the concepts. Like for example, Da Vinci was the first one to create the triangle, you know, Madonna of the rocks and putting it in a landscape. And so there are these different influences in here that you can see in his drawings. So as artists, I want to know that. I find that really interesting how the evolution of an artist happens and, and what he's drawing. And many of these drawings were in the beginning were, um, there were sketches for the big paintings. But then later on, they became works of art. They became more expressive instead of just, here is my little sketch for this beautiful mural. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you some of these and share with you what I learned. And then we're going to do a sketch of a master of Raphael. And, um, but you can do this with any, anyone just put, I, I want you to use your sketchbook and by using, I like how they use, you know, draw things over and over on a page to get the gesture. And I'm going to talk about that, what I got from it and we'll each get something different from it. Okay. I marked some drawings here. Let's see. So that I could. Okay, so here's one. Um, this is the study of Michelangelo's David and um, how he studied this and um, kind of create. I think it's like a little slimmer. It's not as um, beefy as the original um, sculpture. And then here is studies of. Um, Da Vinci started not connecting his lines. He would do a lot of gestural drawings to try and figure things out. And so this is what um, Raphael started doing the same thing, like really trying to bring the gesture in and the tilt of the head and the gaze of, you can see these, the heads are all looking in different directions and how he filled this page. And then here is, um, this is a, a drawing that's actually in the Louvre. And it's um, a study of the Madonna and Child, and it was um, influenced by Da Vinci, as you can see the triangle here. But I also think it's interesting that he um, created a grid in order to draw this. And you can see his signature down here, which is really beautiful. And then this page is the um, more of the studies before he did this final drawing. You can see how he experimented turning his page um, there seems to be a line in here and there's a little hand here. Um, so he was using his paper in many different ways to try and figure out how he wanted his drawing to look, which I think is very beautiful. Um, okay, so this one I learned, um, this is the Madonna and Child and his child is um, study, uh, from a study of Michelangelo's. And then he has, it was done in a pastel. It's very hard to see, but he has like a landscape behind it. And that is taken from Da Vinci. So you can see also see the triangle here. 
And then here's another one, which is really very beautiful. Um, and there's not any smudging. Here's the landscape here behind this. And he uses a lot of cross hatching um, to create the volume. Um, okay, so this one he's studying, you know, here is the hand is really beautiful. It's starting to look a little bit like Da Vinci's hands, but he was working on the tilts of the head in this. And this one, oh, there goes Millie. There we go. <laughs> this must be the UPS man. Okay. What's this? So this one is very closely here. I'm going to, let's see. I'll tell you exactly. 56. Because this is an important one. Let me go back to my plates here. Because I think this is interesting. So this one is study of heads and a battle scene. It's silver point with white highlighting on gray paper. And the two heads are studies from the a fresco um, that da Vinci did in Florence. And the I'll show you, there's a horse with its back to the spectator, and it only occurs in one of da Vinci's drawings. And it's really hard to see, but you know, this totally looks like da Vinci head, and here is a hand, but here is the back of the horse, and this is the battle scene. So he was studying, um, the horses and the heads. And we've seen this one's very close to Da Vinci and the hand, but his, I feel like Da Vinci's hands were more elongated. Um, but it's very beautiful. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I wanna show you. Oh, and here is his study of The Last Supper. All right, and so we are gonna study one and this one, I thought she was beautiful, and I practiced it a little bit before so I could talk to you more about it. But this is the study, and he has, this is really beautiful, her hair. I just love this, and she's got this head wrap that wraps around underneath her chin, and there are these, this wrap around her. Then there's this, these two hands. So obviously this was a different drawing than he did the study here. There's feet. So because this person is kneeling and this final drawing here, this is all influenced more by Michelangelo. So he's studying with different masters, which I think there was this transformation in his style. Let me see if I can go back to one of his early ones so you can see. Let's see. So this, like, this is very upright and rigid. And here's one of his earlier ones too. And then there's this beautiful movement that's happening. And that's what I, I find just so breathtaking is this movement. And what I love is um, that, you know, he, he just has a lot of just line work, a little bit of shading, but I love how all these lines, how he's trying to capture, because I think this is a hand here and it must be like she has like a, a long sleeve and then there's her hand, but there's all this fabric. So he's trying to capture this flow of the dress. So she looks like she's kind of in a kneeling. This is a knee here. So I'm going to draw her again. And of course, you know what always happens. I'm not gonna jinx myself, but <laughs> you know, it's Facebook Live, my friends. Okay, let me get my little notes out of the way. Um, but I think it's really exciting to read about him and, you know, how these artists influenced and how his own style emerged from that study. So let me find, here's my first study of her. And um, I'm going to try and do it again for you. And I'm going to keep it very simple because I think this is in just in charcoal, but I can go back. I, I like these plates where you can go back and get a little bit more information about the piece. Let me just double check. I think it was left my brain here when I was seven. Um, kneeling woman, um, the drawing, it doesn't say, it corresponds to a fresco that was deeply influenced by Michelangelo. All right, so I'm going to use my, this kind of creamier paper instead of the bright white. And I'm going to start with I'm gonna start with this, that's a hard pencil. Let's 
That's hard. Okay, I want to do a 4B. I think this is, yeah. All right, so in studying this, when, when you are going to study a master drawing or painting, you want to take time and just kind of really observe it. Don't rush into it. Um, I'm looking at the composition of it. She is kind of pushed to the left. I don't know if there were there was it was a bigger sheet of paper because this is all could be cropped for the book, so I don't have that information. Um, but I'm also going to look at the negative space around her. I think this is the bottom of her dress. There are like these little kind of points that could be in the fold with some a, a little bit of adornment or embellishment. And there was something. There's supposed to be like a crowd of people here in the final fresco. So I can see just a small um, nod to the people there. And I think there was a person here too that's a head and shoulders when I start looking at it. So there's a little bit of a landscape there. And I don't know why there's this line across here. I don't know if that's something he made or if it is a landscape. I know, sorry about Millie. <laughs> that's what she does. All right, so. I may have to <clears throat> engage Olivia. So what's gonna be challenging is this. This is this strong line right here of her throat into her chest. And then there's this kind of shape in the shadow. And then there's all of these beautiful folds. So I'm gonna do my best. And it's a little bit more challenging when I'm talking to you. So I may not talk very much <laughs> as I try to replicate this or at least stu I'm studying it. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with a little piece of charcoal just to help me kind of make this circle here to block in. All right, and I have a little piece of, um, okay, of needed eraser too. So I want to keep it very simple. And so there's this circle. This is hats like sitting on her Head. And I like to try and think about that. How is this, um, her garments draping and what was he seeing and how he was trying to study that. So I'm going to do a little bit of a block in. Now, of course, you know, the um, contemporary person here, I want to go like this. <laughs> so I can't. If I took a picture, I probably could see it. Um, there's a little hair here. And her forehead, her eye socket, and then there's this little cheek. And it's rounded, and then her chin. And what I will do is I will kind of look at the angles and try to get an angle in there. Um, and it's not gonna be exact. And she has this, her hair seems to be tucked in, and there's a, um, And since I'm lightly blocking in and holding my pencil back, so I don't have enough of her face. This is too big on this side here. Oh, yeah, up there. That's kind of her cranium because she had, there's the ear that's down here. And since her eye is up here, this ear is down a little lower. So I'm just going to put it in and kind of finish. Now, I don't have that graceful curve of her neck, which I'm hoping I will be able to achieve. So this may take me longer than a usual. So if you need to go, I understand. <laughs> this could be, I might have bitten off more than I could chew here trying to do this. All right. So I want to look where this is lining up and there's that negative space there. So there's like a little wedge and that is the way her um, shawl is draped. I'm just going to keep blocking it in. And I love the um, how he did fabric too. It's always fun to look at that. And this is kind of down here. So there's this angle here and there's the angle of her chest, which is straighter here. And then there's the shoulder. So I just try to like kind of line up things. 
So the shoulders here. And if I had this at my easel, I could stand back and hold my pencil and move back and forth to really um, finesse the angles and, and really do it more of a true study. And that's what I would suggest doing. I'm doing this flat. And so it's a little bit um, skewed because when you're drawing flat like this, it always changes your perspective. All right, so this is her chest. And there's all these beautiful folds here that I'm just gonna try and capture. Yeah. All right, so then I think this is a hand, so it's kind of like a circular gesture and I can line it up. Um, it looks like it's right under her chin, so that would be a good place. So when you're drawing and sketching and you have your subject, um, even if it's you know like a photograph, then look at those relationships. It's really important to your overall um, composition to understand the relationships of the different parts. So if you have a bowl of fruit, you know, by kind of looking and measuring things, like there's a, a beautiful line of motion here, line of action right there. So I wanna make sure that I get that and, and hopefully capture this lean in her body. So there's a big hurt, she's leaning, it's either she's went down or she's coming up as she's looking at these people. And, and understanding things like that will help you um, in as you paint and draw and work on different subjects. Okay, so I don't, I really wanna get caught up in these folds, but I'm not letting myself. All right, so now there's the hand here. So this angle here is somewhere in here. And then there's a little bit of a space here. So I don't know where that is yet, but I'm gonna kind of work on this elbow here. I think that's her elbow. And she's got a big blousey sleeve. So I'm looking at the lines, which I will go back and, and kind of work on some more. And I just do the, the block in. Okay, so there's a lot of complicated line work here, but I'm going to look at her knee and her knee is lining up with her chin. So I don't know if my chin's in the right place, but I'm going for it here. So I can capture that angle. So I would like, you know, I, and probably what he did was he studied these and drew them over and over again and um, or or parts of things he probably didn't do it I don't know I'm speculating my friends but I assume that he would study bits and pieces and incorporate what he learned into his work so there's this little gather here a little I'm gonna put in and so I'm trying to, I don't know if I have that in the right place. I feel like it's too low. Yeah, it's way too low. My knee is too low. Okay. So there is this kind of weird line here. Now I'm going to bring my knee up. There we go. Okay.
Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of move around the drawing a little bit more. And I'm looking at the pieces of this fabric and trying to capture how he used line and just a little bit of tone to capture. So it looks like it's drapery or it's draping on. And I like how this, this pulls up here, there's these pieces. And then there's a lot of scribbly lines here. Okay, so that's close. Let's look at my first one and see. The first one, I, I feel like this one is her, I have her pose better. Let me go back to her, oh no, I lost her. There she is. I feel like I, I have the line better of her pose. Um, she could be bent over more, and I think if I raise up the knee, the knee up a little bit, and there's this, he has this one line, and then it connects. And there's folds here. So I feel like that is this um, line of action is better in this one. And yeah, because I don't really have, it's a little off here. And her head is more upright, whereas in this one, I think I captured the angle of her head a little bit better. Um, but there's certain things I like in this one as well. Like I really like how this came out and the folds, but I could keep working on it. So um, anyway, let me go back to her because I think I'm starting to like her a little bit better. And, we want to put these little people in the background. I don't know. <laughs> do I want to? So she has something to look at. Just the idea of the people. Trying to see them. It's very hard. There's a little man over here. Okay. All right, my friends. I'm going to flip it around. Hopefully you didn't fall asleep during my sketching of Raphael's woman here. All right, you guys. Thanks for being here. Bye.